I'm Miranda from the Hugo Lambrats Music Center. I'm the bursar here, and we've been using rice now from the beginning of the year. Um, I must say it's a very um, user-friendly um, program or yeah, system to use. Um, it's very easy to understand. So yeah, um, I'm ready if, if it's right with you, Anna. Mm -hmm. Sure, yes. Can I, can I start or? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay, all right. At first, um, what we're gonna look at is um, how to invoice parents. And I know it can be a very time consuming thing. So for us, because we're a music center, um, we invoice um, parents, sorry for that. We invoice parents um, per term. So what to do is you go to school and we're going to do a batch invoice. Now we're going to, you can see the screen, I've already invoiced like this term's fees now. Then you go to create. Um, it's, yeah, it's very self-explaining. So the, 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 the dates is the from, the period you want to invoice. So for us now, I'm going to start invoicing now, although it's not the right according to the WCG, the next term, but we work like that just to make sure that we get our money in time, you see. So we work from, I'm going to invoice now from the 1st of April until the 30th of June 21. At the notes that says, say, um, um, space, you're going to tell why you're going to invoice the parents. Now for me, it will be the second term music, oops, music fees. Now it's the interesting part. Now it's the, for what I uh, am, I'm gonna invoice the parents. So I press the add the button. I'm gonna choose say our voice training um, um, teacher. So that will be for 30 minute piano singing guitar. And I'm gonna just at the quantity gonna be one. Now for the easy part, you just, Pick the pick um, section here at the top uh, at the on this. I just want to quickly change here. I'm going to type in now my my teacher who's responsible for voice training, and there is a, a list of her students. Now you're going to do the, the select all option. It's very easy. You just click on the first um, student, and you do the control A and you say select. Now I've already invoiced now for the term, but I'm not going, as I'm live, I'm not going to um, post it now because you will save and close and then it will invoice. So I'm not going to do do it now because I'm running live. So yeah, that's, that's, very, that's, that's very easy to, to batch invoicing. So I'm just going to close it and not um, save it. He was going to ask me, do I want to stay? I'm just going to say no, because I don't want to do it now. Um, and now the, the, the next thing that I'm very excited is, is when parents phone to say, um, what do I owe you? Um, oh, no, sorry, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> sorry. The statement, send out my statements first to my parents to say, okay, what you owe us, you go to sales. You pick the statements um, here on your, your statement one. And now again, you, you, you're going to create. And again, I'm going to choose where, for which date. We're going to, I can work on the February one, or I prefer to work per term, but we're going to just leave it like that. And I set my balance to be bigger than zero because I don't want to send out statements that um, parents owe me zero. I mean, and now I'm just going to, here you can just again um, pick your class. Uh, and we can again go to the voice teacher. And then I just say, show my list. Now still I can decide which one I want to generate. If I'm unticking it, then, then, then everyone will be unticked. But say, for instance, I want to send out for everyone. I just tick it. 
then I go to generate and I will generate, but I won't generate now because I am live, so I don't want to generate again. So I will just show you um, how a statement looks. Say, for instance, we just go to, now we go to this one. There is the, there is the statement you can see with invoicing, and that is what the, the, the student um, owe us. You can, from here, you can email it to the parent. And you can, you will see that is the email addresses that will be, that will be um, used. And in your body, you can type um, whatever you want to type. So please pay the fees or something like that. Um, I'm just going to close again because I've already generated. I just want to show you another way to send out a statement if you don't want to open it up. Um, say, for instance, again, for Tia Williams, uh, yeah, direct, if I click on it and I say email, it will come up. So you don't need to open up the statement every time. But um, yeah, it's all about preference. If you want to do it, open it up and then mail it, um, you can do that. So that is when um, for sending out the statements to the parents. Um, I'm just going to close all of this. Um, the next thing, oh sorry, the next thing is when when a parent phone us to say what are, what do we owe? So again, you go to school. You will pick um, your student, and yeah, now you get a whole list of um, of your, your your learner list. And now I say again, let me see. I tick 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 in say Janssen. Just waiting. Now, say for instance, it's Tihana Janssen's parents that phoned in and asked me, I just double click. And you've got the student card now in front of you. And then with document journal, you just click there once. Now you will see, I've already, I've invoiced the student for uh, 2,500 Rand. I did receive one payment of 700 Rand. There's a balance of 1,305. And you can see I did generate um, a statement um, already for um, that. Merinda, yes. I'm very yes. sorry to interrupt you. Um, we just have a message that the sound quality is not so good. Um, if possible, perhaps we could just check the settings um, just like we were testing um, yesterday. Um, uh, this. Okay, I'm hearing a sound to okay, the speaker. I must know. Okay, you hear it, yes. Okay, the microphone, can somebody hear me or can they hear me? I can hear you quite clearly, but I. I saw the message in our chat window that the sound quality is not so good. So I was just thinking perhaps we can click that setting, you know, to adjust your microphone. I don't know um, where you've accessed, accessed that one, but it was yesterday in the settings. Yeah, Maybe I can remember, yeah. I just want to quickly see. Um, oh, yes, it is. It is, already, no, it is, it is, um, uh, yeah, it's thick. Adjust microphone. The person that that, that sent the message can because I did bring the microphone now um, nearer to my mouth. I don't know if that person can just give us an indication. Um, okay, let me just see what they're saying. Okay, there is an echo now side from the presenter, but the lady who is asking the question now is very clear. Yes, it is a bit better. Okay. Thank you so much. I think we can continue. Um, and just for everyone attending, if it's possible to mute your microphones, um, that can help as well. Um, yes, thank you so much. Okay, do I need to go through the, um, the, the, the last one again, Anna, or can I just continue? Um, perhaps if, you, if it could be repeated, yes. If you All can right. just, thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, for, for when a parent phone in to ask when, uh, what is still outstanding, you go to school, 
to student. And then you've got your, your all your students. And now you can just type in a synonym. Um, you can type in the synonym that the system can, can search it. And okay, and I'm using like Tihana Janssen's one. Here you've got your student card and you go to document journal. And here you can see now that I've invoiced this, this student for 2,500. I did, uh, did receive a payment of 700 and there's a balance now due from 1,305. And you can also see that I did generate a statement for the student. So that is for, yeah, for um, when somebody phone in um, for outstanding fees. The next, the next thing that's also very nice, I'm just going to close here to show you the same thing, is that when you want to draw like a, or get like a, um, a class list or a student list, again, you go to school, you will go to students. Now you've got all your learner data, but say I only want this guitar, the, the, the guitar students, then you pick the class. Say I only want the males, and if I did put in the gender, then it will pick, pick the gender. The same with if it's only the females, then you can go down with the little error, uh, er, error, <laughs> error, <laughs> and you can go down and you will only get the females. But say now we want this and this um, class list or the uh, class list of uh, alphabetic list for this guitar um, um, teacher. Now I want to print it. So then I go to more actions. Um, I, can, I can always output it like, like an output list and you can decide this is a spreadsheet and I can decide what I want to give the teacher. Say, for instance, I only want the, the um, diamond surname, I don't want the class, I want the grade, because we are not, um, our students, we can't enroll on CMS because we're a, like a special school. We got to carry this, the school where the child is primary, the, 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 the first school. So if you want that, the gender, and then on our notes, we say how long the lessons is. So then we say, okay, that's my list for my for my for my teacher. There you get it. So now you've got the option to go and say, okay, I want to print it now for the teacher. You go to file. My settings I need to set up because um, I don't know. Uh, it's just I need to do it every time to do the page width and the landscape. And I say okay. I'm just waiting for my system. Oh, it's not doing it. Okay, sorry. Okay, and now I go to print. I like to go to print, print, print preview. It's just better that I know exactly what I'm going to print. And you just go to print and you print. So that's very easy, very nice to have. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that one as well. Um, the next. The next thing that is um, that's on our list to do is the bank recon. So if there's a lot of bursars in the in the listening today, um, this is very, very nice to use. It's much easier that I found in Pastel because Pastel was our previous program that I used. Um, here, um, what you do is you will create. Again, I'm live, so I'm not going to do anything now. Your statement date is the date on when you want to do the reconciliation. Um, and then your closing date, it must, uh, your closing balance must be the same as your statement date, as with normal recon reconciliation. When you did that, you will press refresh and then you will pick. If I refresh now and I pick, you will see that I won't be, because I didn't put in any balance, but I just want to show you at the bottom, year it will show you the difference that the, 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 there's no you know, the difference in the bank reconciliation i'm going to close this i'm going to show you a previous one that the like february's one um i go to 
February, I will, I will I open it up. Then you will see my bank, my statement date, my closing date. I did my bank reconciliation and there is no difference. Say for instance, there was a difference. Then you can go and you can click the check reconciliation and it will show you, oh, there was something wrong. Um, so that is that is a nice option. The other thing is you can still print your reconciliation. You can print it from here and you can just go and print it. Um, then the other nice thing is I'm going to close my bank reconciliation because I just want to show you something else. If you, you've got your bank reconciliation done and you don't want to open it, you can just go to print bank reconciliation and you and you print it. So this is this was a very nice it's a very nice tool i enjoy it i really enjoy it um something else i don't know what kind of reports um the bursh has got to give to the sgb but there's two options that you can do the one is your um income um income statement you go to account accounting and now under reports it's cash basis. You will choose if you only want it for a quarter, you can do it for a quarter. Let us, let us do it for a quarter. You pick there for this quarter. And now you say just run a report. And it will give you your income, then your expenses, and also your other income. Something nice. Um, yeah, that is sorry. That is that is the income statement. The one that our SGB prefer um, is the budget against your actual. So it's again um, with accounting. You go to bad, um, budget budget against your actual, and now you can again decide: Do you want it for the quarter? Do you want it for your year? Our HSGB prefer the whole, if you do it only for a quarter, what the report um, does is it will break down your budget in your quarter. So for this quarter, I'm already re received more money that we budgeted for, but our HSGB um, prefer to do the, the annual one. So you just go to year and you run the report. So now they can see, okay, we've budgeted, say for instance, like an expense now, we've budgeted for copy machines, 65,000 for the year. Up till now, we only, we only used um, like nearly 11,000 um, rand for the year. So that's, um, that's, I like the report. I like, I, I actually like this one more than the pastel one that, I, that I've used. So it's very, as I've say, said before, it's very user friendly. Um, and yeah, that is for the, for, I just want to close that and that one, sorry. Um, that is now for the income statement and the, the, the budget against the actual. Now say for instance, you want to create a new, um, account, um, to do the, to, to like for some of other reason you have, you've got to open a new account. You go to accounting and then you first go to your chart of accounts because you want to see all right which account is uh, yeah which account is still um, available also what i found is nice is this little error you can just go right straight down so i want to see now which was my last expense account and i see oh it's a four eight um double zero slash zero five zero so i'm going to decide okay now i could i've got to create a new account and i again i just go to um, accounting and you go to create and it's an account and now here you decide okay say for instance that is now for what do you call it oh just say shoes just for the sake of the, the training okay and now I decide, okay, say I'm going to do an account type. Now, this little error will tell you all the accounts that is, all, all the account types that is av available. Uh, Paul, 
Ako po. Ako po. And I can I continue or? Yes, sure. Um, okay. um, our attendees, if you can just please mute your microphones, that would be appreciated. Thank you so much. Okay. Now with the account type, because this is an expense that I'm going to do, the expense of my book, I will pick um, expense. Now your financial category, again, you go to the drop down list. Now you decide, will it come in your income statement or your balance sheet? It will definitely, or it will be an income statement expense or an income statement. Now the interest, interesting is this W, the entry in the 043. Um, those that work with it will know that it can be time consuming. So this is the, the, the easy or the nice part of this. You pick there and then it will ask you show all. And now you can choose. On your expenses, you've got all this um, little um, sections that you can choose. This will be a other expense. I will select. And now whenever expense will enter into the bank, it will go automatically to my 043. Now I've got to decide my code and I know I choose and I said, okay, 48A, say 090. And now you can just save and close. But I'm not going to do it because as I explained before, um, I am live. And if you want to check, say, okay, I said no, 090. I'm like, oh no, okay, I can actually use 060 because that was my last expense um, um, account. So I can actually do that because I did open my chart of accounts previously. So then you can just um, say save and close. But again, I'm just going to close it because I'm not going to um, um, create this account now. And now they will ask you, do you want to save it? And I will just say no, because I'm not going to save it now. All right. But say now you, you still got to get this into your budget because some, some of other reason you missed it or you want to put it in your budget account, uh, in your budget. Again, you go to accounting. You go to create. No, that one. Sorry, that one. Budget. And now you will see this is my budget for this year. You will double click. And this is my budget as it was entered for this year. As soon as I'm pressing the add button to add that um, um, end or that new account, it will open up a line right at the bottom of my, of my budget. So now I can say, oops, not that one. Sorry for that. I will just say 488 and say, I, did cre I didn't create it, but there I will. And then you can just type in, like it was for shoes, the expense account, what did we budget for? And then um, it will show in your budget. Again, I'm not gonna do anything because I am live and I don't want to mess up my my, my, my budget. So that is that is for the, for the um, creating a new, um, general ledger account. I'm just going to close. Oh, sorry. Okay, now for the, actually I want to say for the better part of, or the best part of, of the RISE system is your bank stream. That is really, really nice um, the way it works. Um, I'm first going to open my 043. I will go to my school and then I will go to my reports and I will go to my um, 043. Um, I will click because I'm and I will run the report for this quarter. I'm going to match school fees now to a, to a learner. So this amount. Um, you will see this amount will, will change as soon as I'm matching or I would I need to run the report again, but then you will see it will change in your 043. 
um, I will go to bank and my bank stream. Okay, so we received this payment um, yesterday and I will just like say we choose the, the second one. Oh, we just choose the second one. You go to new and you got a match. And now what I also like from the system is here it tells you it's an ACB credit and it's for that student. So here I will just put in the surname. It will show the, the student for me and you match it. If you pick there the little square and you match it. Now here, here it shows me, that shows us that the customer is the, um, if you little scroll it like that, it will show you. That is for the student. So you can actually make double sure that you match it to the, to the, um, to the um, correct student. And it, it was matched to a tax invoice. And now I can just approve it. All right, you can see it's out of my out of my bank account. Of, uh, out of, on, and now I just want to show you as soon as you approve it, it will lie on your approved transaction. There it is, Kotze, and it was approved. Now for the interesting side, we go back to the O3. I will run the report because you can see the amount here. I will run the and there it changed automatically. So if you want to print uh, 043 for some of other reason, you can just print it and then you will, you will see the, um, well, then you've got your report. So that is basically all the, all the, the nice, thing, well, everything is nice, but what the um, accounting side that helped me a lot is definitely the bank stream is very, very easy. So what we're gonna do now is, now, some, somewhere in the line, I know, well, all of us, I think, struggle to get money in. So now we've got to inform the parents first because we, we are a new school now going over to RISE. So I'm going to first now um, ask the parents, please download the RISE um, school communicator because we need to communicate with you. So you, again, you go to school, you will find a lot of your... Um, um, things that you, you, you would need, you will fall, find under school. You go to school and you go to school communicator and under news, you will pick, pick that. Okay, I've already created um, a, 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 a entry here and I'm not, yeah, I, I am gonna send it but for the training, I'm just gonna not send it today. So automatically that will be you type in your date now this is the nice also a nice little thing if i untick it you will see that the um the red disappeared as soon as you tick it again then the parents will get it like okay this is very um very important now my um title is download rice school communicator i say something for them please download it and now, because we, we the, our principal did um, send out um, a, a letter regarding the RISE um, school, school communicator, we've, I can attach the, the letter. So you just go to attach, you select your disk, and here it is. There is it, and I can pick it, and I can say open. But I've already done that. I'm just going to cancel here and cancel again. And now for the channels, if you want to send it um, to everyone, you just leave it untick. And if you want just to send it to specific classes, you tick. And that is for for a pushing notification uh, for a push notification. Um, I'm not going to again. I'm not going to going to send it. I'm just going to close it. Um, I didn't do anything, so I just okay. So that is for that. But the other thing that's also nice is when you do like to, you want to send out a bulk email, um, and it's the same thing for everyone. So you go to sales, and now you've got it. You've got here the tools, and you go to bulk emailing or emails, 
And I've created here um, this morning like a little draft. I'm just going to open it up, double click it. And I've say here, pay of center fees. The con I've already put in my content and to say, please pay it. Um, if you want to attach, you can attach something. Now the recipients, who's going to get it? You can, the recipient, there you say, select contacts. And now I've already picked one, say for instance, um, we pick that one. And okay, let me just, okay. We say we're going to send it to that group. Again, you, you, you press um, the, the, the first one and then control A to, to select all of it. And then you bring it over. Now you've got all your students you want to send um, the, the uh, email to, or the parents actually. Say for instance, you only want, you want all of them, but you don't want to send it to that student. Then you just untick it and you say finish. And, oh, why does it, oh, there because there's two. That's the other thing. There's two, if there's two email addresses of a student, it will go to two student addresses, unless you've picked it, you, you, you said, no, you, you don't want to send it to that student. That is for bulk emailing. I will show you, I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, I've, I've sent out, um, yeah, the 15 was Monday. I've sent out this email, but no, sorry. No, 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 sorry, 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 I just want to get it quickly again. Okay. You can actually print the report to say, okay, I mailed it, it was sent out, there was some of them that was read, none of them came back. So you know exactly what time you send it out. So that's also very nice, um, a nice option or a nice tool, something like proof that you that you did send it out um, to the parents. You can do it there, there or you go to just to the recipients and you will say see the same thing. Um, who didn't read it yet? So you can actually follow up with them if they don't pay. So yeah, that is that is to the bulk emailing and yeah, the system we're using and we really I I really enjoy um, this to work on rice um, yeah the rice school management. Okay, and I, I'm done. Yeah. All right. Um. Thank you so much, Merinda. Thank you for such an informative presentation. Um. I see we do have some questions. Let's just see. I'm gonna to try to read them out loud. Okay. okay, so can you do bulk emails? Okay, we have shown that you can do bulk emails. Um, can you sort and set the system of the defaulters so that those who are over 30 days will automatically receive an email? So you can select certain parents that you can just email from the system as Mirinda has shown now. So that's a yes. And then the income statement is set up to tie with the bank account. That is correct. How do you record payments due, but not yet paid? So this is something that our accountant shows in detail, you know, so um, yes. So I was going to mention, um, so, you know, other schools that we work with, like high schools and primary schools, uh, they all use CIMIS numbers, and uh, some of them even use family codes. So the system does accommodate that. Um, so yes, you can put that in. And some of our schools, they even have additional information, uh, like one school, the, the learners, they get SASA grants. So we can customize the learner data to basically make it work for your specific school. But as it is even now, um, as you saw what Merinda was showing, you see this is done for her school. So she just unticked what she doesn't want to see. But like other schools, um, high schools, primary schools, secondary schools, they tick, for instance, CIMIS numbers, they tick um, family codes um, and other basically information that they use. 
Okay, I hope this answers the question. And I can I just say something? Yeah, sure. Okay, for Anna, Anna or Rice and Anna was very helpful for us. For us, we need um, on our student card. Um, I'm just going to show you. Okay, just going to hide that. Um, so, for instance, okay, click there. Um, the first student, we need to know if the registration form, um, um, we did receive it. So, Anna or the developers did, um, did that for us. Under our custom field, we will say the registration form. And there's also here that we need to carry the first school because we need it for the WCEB. So for added uh, additional um, information, yeah, the, the system is really compatible for that, I must say. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much, Mirinda. Um, if you have more questions, you can unmute your microphone or just type them up in the chat window. Okay. Um, all right. Um, from my side, I was going to share a presentation with you. So what I will do now, um, Merinda, if you could just um, stop sharing your screen if possible. Thank you so much. And I will share mine. All right. So Merinda, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, I can see your screen, yes. All right, okay. So this is just quickly to share with you how it has all started and why is the system the way it is? Okay. So, okay, sorry about that. I think it just went a bit over. Just need to go back. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can hide this because it's a bit in my way. All right, hopefully it's fine. So about four and a half years ago, we had one primary school approach our accountant and their school had challenges. So there were too many complicated systems. And because of that, they didn't have enough time in the day to basically finish all the tasks and as a result of that, um, they also had problems with having uh, correct information for both the parents, the principal and the SGB. So they requested that we develop the learner data module to suit um, schools towards schools requirements. So we've done that and basically learner data module, you know, it's the information that SA SAMS or SIMIS um, has, but it also has additional information if the school needs that. So if the school needs that, you can fill it in. If you don't need it, it can be just left blank. At the core of it, of course, is the accounting package because for schools, it's so important to do accounting, you know, and to collect fees and also keep track of the expenses. So at the core of the system is the accounting package, which is full on, it has the full functionality uh, just like other accounting systems, but it has extra modules. And because it's been adopted for schools, um, it has additional things that schools make use of. So the next challenge uh, was that the departmental report took a lot of time and it, it basically was a lot of manual capturing in Excel. So what we've done is we developed this report in the system and we integrate it. Um, the, o the 043 with the accounting and the learner data modules. The next one was the batch invoicing, because you don't want to do, you know, to invoice one by one. If you have over a thousand learners, it's a bit, you know, challenging. So we created a tool that you can basically make use of in order to invoice your whole school at once, or you can also invoice per class or grade um, or just individually. So it's completely up to you. You can do it per term or per month or for the whole year. As you saw, there is a direct link with four major banks and we use the Yodli, which is um, 
the world-renowned um, aggregator that other you know big providers also use and what they do is basically they link your statement with the system so that you don't need to print out your statements it's all in one place and you can just allocate your transactions however if need be you can also import the csv statement it's also an option and as merinda has shown so statements can be generated quite quickly either for the whole school uh, per class is completely up to you or per grade, and you can email them directly. You can also see all the reports um, as well as the budget report in the system. It's all available and you can pull it at any time. Because it's a cloud system, you can basically view these reports in real time. You don't need to wait for stuff to update and you can access the system from any computer, any laptop. The communicator. So the other challenge, you know, that was voiced um, by the schools was the communicator. Uh, we developed this mobile app so that schools can communicate at a click of a button, and it's also integrated with accounting. What it means is that parents can see what they have paid and how much they still owe to the school. Last year, we also developed the behavior management, so you can create your incidents and detention letters directly from the system and also from the app. We also developed enrollments so that your parents don't need to fill in a lot of paper and then you, know, you as admin staff members and as bursars need to capture it. They can just fill it in via Google Forms and it can be imported into the system as well as bulk mailing. And that is uh, something you've seen already but that's done basically to assist schools, you know, with following up with your parents and basically seeing if they read your email or if they haven't. The marks module is also fully developed and um, it basically enables you to create all the reports that your school requires and also email your progress reports. So the outcomes, you know, that basically can be summarized in a few sentences is the fact that schools can save quite a few hours per term you know with the automated O43 and we are the first system that automates this report um, also some schools have shared that you know because the system assists them so much in their daily tasks they decided they're going to keep um, they're going to keep staying you know in terms of their job which wasn't the case before and also it assists you with, you know, accessing all your information for stakeholders, such as your parents, your FinCom, your SGB and principal. So you can basically um, access all the reports that you require. And a lot of schools, you know, that do switch to RISE, they also um, end up saving quite a bit because they, they no longer need to keep three or four systems, they can just have one system. Okay. All right. This was actually the feedback from the from one of the schools, and this is, was this was from the auditor. So she congratulated the bursar, you know, on having very controlled admin and booking function, and um, they basically audited the rice system. So that was also quite positive. This is the communicator. So as mentioned, um, you can put your news and any information that you would like to share with your parents and it's all in one place. And on the right screen, you can see that um, billing. So that's what parents will see. You can also post your newsletters, your time schedules, the reading resources and any other kind of information. So this school, they joined our program last year and this was the feedback from their principal so they were previously using these three systems and his feedback is that we have made a big saving eliminating the need to run a financial and a school admin package. The cost of rise is equal to my annual subscription for the financial package I used, saving me the school admin subscription. At this time, we all need to save. Um, some more feedback from Tigerberg Art Center they also basically, in terms of the ease, you know, they can access everything from one place and also quite a bit of um, savings. So as you can see on the, on the slide, South Peninsula High School also 
they were using other systems and the whole idea was to simplify everything and make it more accessible. So the feedback is that you can automatically populate all your reports and the budget at a push of a button. Then you heard primary. So this school, they were using Excel primarily. And even with that, the BIRS is very happy and she's uh, full on on the system and quite positive feedback about the support and the training that she, she's been receiving. This is Kosadi primary. Um, the feedback is that um, the fact that all school administration information is on one system and it cut my workload in half as I did not have to use my own cash book and the WCD's Excel spreadsheet. Um, Natasha, so it's our accountant, helped me to put new entries and everything added up and was perfect. So I wish I had started using it sooner. During this difficult time, it has helped me immensely as it is an easy system to use and not time consuming at all. I can also work from home when required. Um, another school, it's Fergurov Primary. Actually, uh, just recently, um, the principal also did the forum and he was showing, you know, um, he went through the system, you know, doing the live demo. So they're also quite happy in terms of um, the RISE system, allowing the school to do financial and general admin in line with the requirements of the WCD. And the other one is the most significant aspect for me is the finance module. It eliminates a lot of duplication and combined with the billing functionality on the communicator app, it provides for almost real-time updates to parents. And then also feedback from Sunderland. Um, even though this school, you know, their fees are quite uh, small, but even with that, they found it very helpful um, because previously they were using quite a few Excel sheets and now the bursa just works, you know, in one place and she's been very happy. And her feedback is, I will just read the end of it. I have less paperwork and no longer have to capture the same information on four different platforms. RISE does everything. The RISE system can be customized to the needs of the school. Natasha and Anna have been very helpful in this regard, always listening to my suggestions and trying to assist. All right. And in terms of your saving, so if you just look at the, you know, at the expense in terms of paper, so if you print everything for your parents, so based on the school's feedback, it's about 20,000 rand a year. So you can save that um, as well as the cost of the SMS bundle if you use the communicator. And the onboarding. So if you're thinking of switching to the RICE system, now is a good time. And why do I say that? Because now you can still start working from January, which is basically from scratch. It always helps a lot if you can start working in the system as early in the year as possible. And because we provide you with quite a bit of assistance, um, such as the onboarding assistance, it is quite, um, you, you can start quite promptly. So these are the requirements for onboarding. So your chart of accounts, um, even if you don't have that, these will be the accounts for, from your budget, your learner data, the approved budget, outstanding balances and school details. So because our accountant, you know, basically assists with the import, she will also liaise with your school in terms of how to map your accounts to the O43 to make sure that the system works 100% for your school. And these are the modules that are currently included. So the full accounting package, the automated O43, the RISE communicator app, the billing, the batch invoicing tool, learner data, discipline, enrollment, bulk mailing, absenteeism, and marks. It's also not just the cloud system. You also get accounting support ongoing. So you can ask our accountant if you have any accounting queries or questions, you can always check with her. And you get trained by the accountant. So you also get upskilled. We have just recently had our third O43 form training. So that was really positive and got a lot of positive feedback. And it basically, you know, it's it trained, so our accountant trained schools in terms of how you budget your accounts, so the chart of accounts or the list of accounts, um, how your transactions and um, 
how all these things tie in together and how they reflect on the O43. They have also looked at possible mistakes and also how to rectify them. Um, and this is the training that we provide to schools. So um, in terms of your onboarding assistance, it's 10 hours. And in terms of the training, it's actually eight hours um, and also additional three hours per additional user. And all modules are included. Um, and that's basically it from my side. Um, so this is just a final slide, you know, to summarize the value that RISE um, gives to schools. And because it covers, you know, various um, modules and various needs, it is um, a one-stop system and it assists the bursa, you know, the school principal. It assists also learners and parents and admin staff, as well as the SGB in terms of accessing the information, you know, having the right information at the right time and just um, simplifying your admin tasks um, that you, your school faces daily. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you have questions, you can just type them. Um, or otherwise you can also unmute your microphone. Okay, I see there are some questions. I'm just going to check. Can, okay, what's the name? What is the name of this accounting package and what does it cost? Um, if I may ask you, perhaps um, if you could email us or maybe just leave your email here in the chat window so that we can just get a bit more information in terms of what you require as a school. And then we can provide you with more details on that. I hope this answers your question. And the next question is, can parents be WhatsApped instead of email? An attachment can also be sent via WhatsApp. Many of our parents do not have email addresses. WhatsApp is obviously an option and some schools use that. Um, if you start using the communicator, you no longer use WhatsApp. And the idea is that you don't use your personal phone numbers as a school. And you know, we heard, we, we did get this feedback from schools saying that it is preferable that they don't use WhatsApp because it's sort of, you know, it, um, what you call it? it, it gets a bit too much because, you know, then your, your parents basically WhatsApp you or teachers or admin staff. And then it, it's also a bit of a personal space, you know, the WhatsApp um, app. So the point is that you can use your communicate in a structured way you don't need to post by group. Um, it's all in one place. It's not cluttered because WhatsApp tends to, you know, because it's basically everything is a long winded sort of um, string of information. People have to really search for stuff on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is more like for quick questions, you know. Um, but having said that, um, using the app, it basically gives your school more structured way and it's much easier for you to post something once and you can also see how many parents have engaged with that. And um, of course, if your parents don't have emails, uh, what some schools have done, and I was speaking, I think about two weeks ago with one of the, um, well, he's the operations manager at the school. And what they are doing is they, they are actually creating emails for their parents to assist with, with that challenge. You know, um, I thought that was quite clever, but maybe something also what, um, you know, what is possible is to show them how quickly it is, how quick it is to create a Gmail account, for example, if that would be an option. Uh, perhaps they, they, they could be just educated about it. Um, okay. The next one, okay, I can see your email address. Okay, that's fine. Um, the next one is business WhatsApp, whereby parents cannot interact, but only receive. Um, okay, I'm not really sure about the business WhatsApp. Um, I don't know. So, yes. Um, I know that there is a way uh, on WhatsApp, you can switch off basically messages from parents. Um, yeah, I hope this answers your question. If you have more questions, you can always um, email us or you can also unmute your microphone. 
and ask your questions now. In order to unmute your microphone, you can just click on mute at the bottom of your screen in the left corner. So what I will do, um, I think we are going to wrap up. Um, thank you so much for coming to the forum and I hope that it was helpful. And um, send, please send your email address. We don't have a microphone. All right, I will send my email address now. Um, so we're going to wrap up and I would like to thank Merinde again for doing uh, such a great job and presenting today. You know, even though uh, their school has been quite new, um, she has trained really well and it's just always very encouraging for us because as a provider, you know, um, we make a quite a bit of effort and we really try to assist schools in the best possible way. So when it works and when it helps um, the schools, it's, it's the best feedback, you know, for us to see that, you know, um, schools are happy and that whatever they use in the system, it makes their life easier. So I really appreciate Merinda's your help and um, I wish everyone a nice day. And yes, you can email our, your questions to us. And I see there are two email addresses that you've posted here. So I will make a note um, of that. And otherwise I will mute your microphone. And if you maybe think of more questions, you can always just post them here. And thank you so much again for your time and have a great day further. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much, keep well.